over the last two games against Hibs, you've scored 10 goals. So how much are you looking forward to tomorrow's oh. game? Well, we look forward to this game like we look forward to the other games. So this will be another one for us to go on, compete and uh, be be the best version that we can be. So, yeah, definitely happy to go to go on again and compete. As it gets closer to the end of the season and, and the title as well, is it hard not to look too far ahead, particularly when you've got a Scottish Cup semi-final and that, that title coming as well? No, we, we don't think like that. It's it's mainly focus on the next game and the next game will be against Hibs. Of course, we know what our goals and what our objectives are for this season, but uh, we're not there yet, so we still need to keep on winning games and keep on developing, so that's what we want to do. Hi, Jota. I just wonder, we're up to an international break, is a time for some of the players to know get some rest and whatnot. How do you view this international break coming up? Is it a chance to maybe pause and reflect and, and reset and go again? Well, I look for this international break as an opportunity to develop skills and, um, and things that we don't have the time during the season. So it's always important to have a couple of days of training with, um, with the guys that stay here and don't go to, to the national teams because it's another opportunity to develop and to just be better so we can uh, be better than once the competition is on so yeah it's every moment is important and this one is no different you mentioned there you come we are all coming up to a really important part of the season where, where cups and, and leagues are handed out do you think this break may help celtic in that you are able to work on things you, you could become even better and continue to you know to, to improve going into the, the run-in as we call it you're you're speaking about this international break yeah. Yes. Yeah, as I said before, uh, this is a very important moment for the ones who stay in here and uh, keep on developing. Of course, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not the same because most of the lads are going to, to be on international duties. And when we are all together as a team, we develop things like as a group. And uh, that's, of course, the most important thing. But uh, we have to work with what we have. And uh, the ones who are here are going to give the best so we can be better. Hi Jota, uh, but I have a different question for me. I don't know if you've seen, um, obviously your song uh, from the Celtic fans was taken on. It was on the performed by Ellie Dixon on the radio the other week. Have you have you kind of heard it and saw it? And what you what you make of that? The... Yeah, yeah, I, I've listened to that and shout out to the people who did that. It was it was really talented what they've done, and uh, yeah, I'm just grateful to to hear that. And uh, I just thought that people can have like a good time hearing that, yeah. Is it, is it, what does it mean to you when you hear the song on the terrace when, from the stands as well, the, the, the Celtic fans singing it? And I think a lot of the players have got their kind of own songs. Does it help when you give yeah. you an extra kind of boost when you hear it? Well, um, I think that says a lot about what Celtic is. And once uh, you get that feeling, everything just uh, feels amazing and there's like a sparkling on everyone you know so yeah i'm just happy that that happened and uh, in the end if the fans can be uh, in our backs just helping us and trying to achieve the goal i think uh, um, everything will be better yeah and Jota, just on that when you hear fans singing your name uh, around the stadium does it just show you uh, you know how much you've settled here how at home you are here at celtic and, and you know, you're one of the fan favourites as well. How does that make you feel? That makes me feel really happy. Um, as far as I'm concerned, my job is to deliver on the pitch and that's what I look for and aim for every day. So I'll just try to give my best every training and every game so, so I can perform well and help the team achieving our goals. And uh, if we can deliver a good show to the to the fans, it's also really important because we want to practice good football. And uh, I think we have we have been doing that. Yeah. Just wanted to ask you. Obviously, it's the the international break coming up as well. How much of a dream is it for you to to play for the national team, the first team? And how far away do you think you are from reaching that? Obviously, your form at Celtic has been excellent in the eighteen months you've been here. Well, it's it's obviously a, a dream of mine to to be part of the Portugal squad, but uh, I also understand that the quality of the Portuguese team is is tremendous, and uh, that just gives me a lot of joy to be honest, because 
I'm I'm fortunate to be part of a country who produces amazing talents every every year, and uh, to see very close friends of mine to break through and just deliver results in World Cups, Euros, is, it's already an achievement for me because I know that I was part of it as well. So then once it comes to my time or doesn't come to my time, I'll be just um, fine and in peace with that because I work every day, I, want, I know what my, my goals are and if that happens, I'll be, I'll be happy. If that doesn't, um, I won't be not sleeping for that, you know. So yeah. If, if the time is going to happen, I'll just be ready for that. Just with the coming weeks, uh, Jota, you've got 10 games left of the league, yeah. a semi-final, a potential final coming up as well. How challenging do you expect this time to be? Well, as challenging as the, the league has been and the Champions League and all of the other competitions that we, we were. So um, every game is a different game. Exciting times ahead for sure because like this is the last run of the season. But uh, as I said before, I think we just need to focus on the next game and the next game and the next game. So, yeah, just happy to be in good positions. Um, and uh, we go again. Just ahead of the weekend, Hibernian at Celtic Park. It was quite high score lines for Celtic the last time. But what are you expecting this time around? Well, I've been in football long enough to, to understand that every game is different. So I don't know if it's going to happen the same uh, thing as the other ones we don't think like that like uh, teams have different approaches every game and um, we don't adapt with the others I think uh, we just stick with our principles and with our philosophy of the game so that's what we're going to do and uh, I hope we can deliver the result in the end. Hi Jota, um, Hello. What, you've been here now around about a year and a half um, the performance levels since September have been really really high only lost one game domestically since the game against St Mirren. Have you noticed yourself that the team are playing any differently in terms of playing style um, from even, even not even before we lost that game against St Mirren, but have you seen that the managers completely evolved how the team play um, over the last year or so? Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. I think um, all of the team directions were there our philosophy were there before, but uh, there's something that people need to realize, which is as far as we go on the season and the more we know our teammates and what they do, then we just get to know ourselves in a different perspective. So um, it's normal and I think it's part of the process that in this stage of this year and a half that we have been working under the, the orders of Ainge, that we start to understand how the model works and um, like, there's no shock on us to understand that this is the point that we have been playing the best football because it's been a year and a half working uh, under these circumstances. So I think uh, nowadays we just know each other. We know exactly what to do in the pitch and the right timings to make the right decisions. So, yeah, that's, that's my point of view. Yeah. And we've watched the new guys come into the team, or Alistair Johnston, um, Tomoki Awata, how have they guys settled in in the team of of the straight away in terms of training wise of of they blended into the group well? Yeah, I think that's the strength of of us as well. We always try to to give the best of ourselves to welcome the the new guys into the club, because the same way others did welcome us in a very good way, we want to welcome the other ones the same way, and uh, I think with those guys was no different. Everyone is settled now and I think they have already understood the dynamic of the group. And uh, yeah, it's just to facilitate everything uh, around their lives because it's, it's a new life for everyone. I was in the same position as them before. And uh, as long as you feel comfortable and then you just need to deliver um, results, I think it's the best for everyone because everyone will win with that situation. Hello. Hi, John. Hello. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah, um, uh, I was just wondering, just going back to something you've said before and something we hear quite a lot, is that the team is all on the same page. You're concentrating on the next game every time. And as a human... I know, you're you always... guys listen to that a lot, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the nature well, that's of the truth, to be honest. <laughs> but, like, can you give an insight into how you maintain that kind of focus? Because... 
you know, it must be natural to look always look forward. Mm, good question. Um, I would say that um, it's just the way we work every day because we can see these um, little details every day that we can get better. And we know that uh, we won't achieve bigger things if we don't achieve these little details first, you know. So there's no point on, on us looking forward because it's not going to come if we don't first establish ourselves and uh, just develop these little things as a team and as individuals. So I think uh, we were taught very well from the staff because since day one, they always said to us like, guys, this is a process. We will need time for this, but once everything is settled, then we will just fly. And I think we are in a very good moment right now. Yeah. Yeah, you have footballing mindfulness. That's uh, it was the question. Sorry. No, it's like mindfulness, like staying in the present. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like the the guy of Chicago Bulls with the Jordan docu documentary. Uh, he did something like that, I think. But no, it's it's not the same thing. No, this, this is this is another approach. Another yeah. approach. Yeah. And just to talking about being on the field, um, we've noticed because you have there's so much talent uh, on the wings, and sometimes you'll be swapping uh, left and right mid game. Is that something that you predetermine, or do you have an almost telepathic understanding of when to do it on the pitch? No, that, that just comes naturally because sometimes um, a winger does a movement and ends up on the right side or is pressing on one side and then we just need to swap sides because it's about the dynamic, you know, we need to fulfill the spaces because there's, there's an old dynamic behind and uh, if there's one spot missing, that means that the whole team is not going to work well, you know, so this is a thoughtful game. And uh, yeah, we just need to adapt once that happens. So it's it's natural, yeah. We've had the, the draws today for the Champions League, uh, Europa League and Conference League semi-finals. Yeah. When, when you joined the club, what is it, is it you, was it one of your ambitions to try and take Celtic this deep into European competitions? And, and can this team evolve that they are in this situation, possibly in a year or two's time? First of all, when I came to Celtic, my only aim was just to, to play, to be happy and to enjoy, you know. So uh, I know this, this club aims for big things, but um, as an individual and a football player, you don't come to a place with those things in mind. You first want just to adapt, to feel uh, comfortable inside the team, to understand the philosophy. And after that, you just go after them. So, yeah, now that I've understand the dynamic of the club, we, of course, have, have some good goals and nice objectives. But again, that's not something that we need to look for now because that's not happening now. So when, when the right time comes, we will just think on that. But uh, for now, it's Hibernian tomorrow. It is, yeah. And you talk about the philosophy. Do, do you feel when you're playing and coming up against uh, domestic opponents that... As well as being a, a, you know, above them in terms of ability, also in a mental capacity, because there is this desire to win, this never stop scenario that, that that that's been installed in the team since Ange has come to the club. So you're asking if we have the motivation for the domestic yeah, uh, uh, motivation, but also a mental um, belief that you can always beat your opponents domestically. Well, of course we need, otherwise why would we be in here? We are very competitive, we are here to win and to, to develop, so I think there's no one in the world playing to lose or to draw, so that's not even fun, you know? Even in trainings, like, we always want to win every little exercise, so I think that, that says a lot of us, and um, these games, domestic games, are no different. You, you just need to, to, to find the spark in the game and your motivation so you can go again, again and again. And um, there's always some new things to learn out there. And we know that um, once we learn those things and if we can be like more complete, then we, we are going to be ready for like the big stage and other competitions. So, yeah, we cannot take it from, for, for granted. Yeah.